Welcome back to the lab. This week I decided to finally do something which I've had in mind to try for a long time, and that is to make my own tuning forks out of high carbon steel for various reasons. This one got rolled into a simple electromechanical oscillator circuit, the likes of which I've built several times before, since I was a kid, back as early as when I was 14 or something. But uh, this one's a little different in that it's driven by an electromagnet in the usual way, but it's being transduced by a piezo transducer and uh, the, the acoustic signal off the fork. And uh, that only works because the piezo is tuned to the same frequency as the fork, which happens to be 2275 hertz, the resonance of protons uh, at my location right here. So um, it's going to be a time base for NMR circuits in the future, possibly. But really, it's just a curiosity. So normally I run it, or this circuit works, with just a triple A. This block is the length of a triple A. This is a pair of double A's. At 3 volts, uh, this circuit starts itself. So let's see how that... So I presume that's audible on the camera, because it's at a frequency where... There's actually a, the mic will pick it up. And this is the schematic. Let's make sure I got that on camera. It's based on the Accutron watch, the, the, PA, the electromagnetic tuning fork movements for a watch. The only difference is the modern transistor or fairly modern and the piezo substitution, which I already talked about. So when I was making forks, I wanted to show you something else here. It's kind of interesting. This is a little piece I cut out of my notebook. What I did was I just marked these quarter inch divisions, counted them like the, the actual lines on the paper. And I traced what, the first fork I made and the subsequent three or four onto the same shape here and wrote down the frequencies. And then from a few data points, I was able to come up with this very simple function that fits, that fits it extremely well for this stock. All these forks were made out of the same stock. So if I made a quarter inch long fork, and this rule would surely break down <laughs> for, you know, at a quarter inch, it's like just one div that that would never work. But uh, anyway, if you're up at ten or whatever, all these work. This uh, rule works extremely well. And um, as I was making all the forks I made, I wrote down what they were. So uh, I know that this this works out really well. So whatever stock you use to make your tuning forks, just find out what that constant is, and then you can make whatever frequency you want. So you'll have to make one or two just for fun. So. This is a 512 I made just for fun, and uh, it's actually zinc plated. Not really, I don't really love the zinc plating that turned out, but anyway, it's kind of fun. And uh, just to show you how accurately this stuff can be tuned, this is a set uh, A220, 440, 660, 880, 1100, and 1320. It's a harmonic series, and I have a bunch of ideas for experiments and things to do with these, but there's the root, first one, second one, third one. That uh, distortion just comes from the fact that this is an IKEA table. It's a distortion table. kind of sucks the energy out of them somehow <laughs> more than most other tables. It's the right acoustic impedance. Anyway, uh, that uh, just goes to show that it's actually a pretty straightforward process once you get the hang of how to tune a set of tuning forks. Okay, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching.